story is from Pakistan. It's a story that took the entire country by storm. People were on the streets, protests broke out across the nation, and various parts of the country were quite literally on fire. It all began with the arrest of Imran Khan, the former Prime Minister of Pakistan, and of course, a global cricket star. Let's get you the background. The 9th of May 2023, the Shehbaz Sharif government orders the arrest of former Prime Minister Imran Khan. He's picked up from the Islamabad High Court, not by the police, but by paramilitary forces. Khan was seen being forcefully taken into a van. What was Imran Khan doing at Islamabad High Court? He had gone to file a bail application in seven cases. Imran Khan faces over 140 cases ranging from provoking violence to murder to blasphemy. What happens next? Khan is taken into the custody of NAB, or the National Accountability Bureau of Pakistan. This time, Khan is charged with corruption. The story also involves his wife, Bushra Bibi. It is the Al Qadir University Trust case, the very trust that was set up to impart quality education, but ended up facing an inquiry for property settlement which caused a loss of 190 million British pounds. Not only this, in this very case, Khan is also accused of getting 458 canals of land in his trust's name by misusing power. The long pending inquiry has now resulted in his arrest. But this does not go down well with Imran Khan's party members. They call the arrest a kidnap. They name it illegal. In fact, every citizen who supports him is outraged. A massive uproar rings out across the country. Lahore, Karachi, Multan, Peshawar and Quetta, all these cities are filled with protesters. Everyone demands that the judiciary intervene. 24 hours after his arrest, another case against Imran Khan. Again, this case involves his wife, Bushra Bibi. It's called the Tosha Khana case. Khan is accused of buying precious state gifts from the treasury at cheap prices and selling them to foreign businessmen through his wife's contacts. These state gifts include gold-plated pens, expensive watches and jewellery. Khan's supporters run riot. Women are seen coming out onto the streets to protest. Violence and vandalism rages. Schools are shut, communication links are cut off, and internet services are suspended in large parts of the country. The blame game begins. The Pakistani establishment blames Imran Khan and his party PTI for pushing the country into deep layers of anarchy. PTI blames the army and government for framing Imran Khan. The protesters storm the house of a Lahore Corps commander, and they make sure they don't leave empty-handed. Various items, including Coca-Cola, chicken korma, a peacock, are taken along. The situation gets so bad that the office of Radio Pakistan in Peshawar is set ablaze. Officers of the Associated Press are also attacked. The protesters are arrested on grounds of arson and clashing with police officials. On the 12th of May, Khan is granted interim bail. His bail has been extended now till the 8th of June. But has the situation improved? Perhaps not. The high-voltage drama continues in Pakistan. Imran Khan has now been accused of sheltering protesters in his house, the very protesters who took the country by storm on the 9th of May. He's been accused of harboring terrorists against his own country. It doesn't stop there. In recent developments, protesters have been accused of attacking army safe houses. But the catch here is, only army officers are aware of these safe houses. As a result, a significant question is being raised. Are top officers of the ISI behind the mobs? Some of the parliamentarians from Imran Khan's party are threatening to resign. This is because they are taken aback by their leader's decisions. In response, Khan has released a video address. It was aired on the PTI's official Twitter handle. Khan alleged that the protests of May 9th are part of an internationally organized conspiracy. 
Countries are demanding Pakistan adhere to its constitution and abide by rule of law. In fact, as many as 65 U.S. lawmakers have signed a bipartisan letter urging the Secretary of State to quote-unquote prioritize the promotion and protection of democracy and human rights in Pakistan. So what can be done, if anything, to de-escalate Pakistan's political chaos and unrest? Let me put that question to Adnan Kaiser, who's a foreign affairs expert. He was also formerly commissioned as an officer in the Pakistani army. Um, Mr. Kaiser, thank you so much uh, for joining us. It looks to be, I mean, we've been talking about the chaos in Pakistan now for months altogether. Doesn't seem like getting any better. How do you see this present crisis shaping up? Well, thank you very much for, uh, for having me at your channel. It's always a privilege to be at your channel. And good evening to all your viewers. Uh, so first of all, we have to understand uh, what is happening in Pakistan uh, in the historical background. Um, so, you know, uh, this is kind of a, of a democratic awakening. Uh, it, is, uh, uh, it can be uh, seen as similar to the Arab Spring, which happened in 2011 in the Middle East as well as in the 2019's protests which took place in Lebanon, uh, Iraq, and Algeria. Uh, so there is a, uh, because of, uh, you know, social media awakening and other things. So Pakistani people have, have risen up. First of all, is that the Pakistan's constitution is feudalistic in nature. So it has, it has been, uh, you know, favoring the, the, the politicians who had been uh, carrying out loot and plunder of the state resources for the past about 75 years. So this is one. Secondly, our judicial system, you know, it is still continuing of the colonial uh, uh, system. This is second. So, um, uh, so, so Pakistani people are not getting relief from these two things. The other thing which we must understand is that, you know, the, whether we like it or not, Pakistan army has played a very fundamental role in the politics of the country. That role which you're talking about, one of the big concerns that many people are having is as the instability continues, as the if rioting happens, if further attacks actually take place uh, in the manner that they have, at what point is the army going to say, OK, enough is enough and we'll, have, we'll step in once again? It's happened often enough in Pakistan's history in the past. Uh, army is not going to step in this time because the the, the, the situation has has uh, has fundamentally changed. So army has been carried out uh, carrying out the hybrid form of governance in the in the country. In the past, they had been carrying out controlled or guided democracy during President Ayub Khan and uh, during Zia Haq and, and Jana Musharraf. So unfortunately, uh, Pakistan army uh, uh, is is not or uh, fortunately is not going to step in and take power. But again, you know, there is a there is a strong uh, 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 consideration that Mr. Imran Khan is going to be eliminated. And the moment he is eliminated from the politics, uh, then the PTI will disintegrate. As soon as PTI gets disintegrated, then everything will die down. All right, Mr. Kaiser, the chaos will continue for the foreseeable future. Thank you so much for joining us with that. My pleasure. Thank you very much for having me.